Today's topic will be enabling custom visualizations. Uh, it's the basics that we're going to talk about. Basically, what we're going to cover is how to enable it and how to utilize a custom visualization. And we're talking simply at this point at out of the box MicroStrategy. And there's two ways to uh, manipulate or view custom visualizations. It's a little bit confusing for some developers, the utilization of these visualizations, just because the way MicroStrategy embeds them is a little bit tricky. There's in graphs and there's in documents. So they might be the similar, they might be different, especially if you're using multiple formats. So we're just going to talk about the basics. I'm going to go into a 9.4 environment. And uh, another thing is some of these visualizations change from one version to another. Some of them even change their name, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully they're trying to clarify them and not cause more confusion. So bear with me. If you see something different, you have a different version, it's, it's expected, okay? So one of the first things you want to uh, enable if you're an admin or ask your admin to enable is the custom visualizations option and if we go to our project defaults as an admin you can you know you can use this as screenshots as well if you need to send your admin any links but from the project defaults there's a list of items I'm going to scroll down and you will see one towards the bottom that says custom visualizations enable or disable and uh, I already have it enabled but if you don't, you need it enabled for you to uh, add these custom visualizations. So now that it's enabled for me, or if I just enabled it, I can go into my project and I will see the ability to add these. So I'm gonna go into a report in the tutorial. Let's just go by subject area. Uh, inventory sounds good. Let's just do something simple, cost, price, profit per unit. I'm just going to run this. All right, so here's a default out-of-the-box report from MicroStrategy. And, uh, and one of the things that I want, let me just minimize this window so we can see it better. There we go. I'm just going to expand it. So one of the things that we will be able to see because we enabled custom visualizations is this option right here. If you did not enable it or you do not have it enabled in the preferences, just uh, in the defaults like I showed you a second ago, you will not be able to see this option right here. Okay, And you only can see the tools, obviously, when you run this report. So we were going to run the report or the grid or graph. And then I'm going to choose the option. Now here you will see the ability to enable custom visualize. So we're going to enable them. And here we have two options. We have the flash and the Ajax, okay? And obviously you might not want to use any flash, but if you did, this is where you take advantage of them. You will see a bunch of them, image sample. Okay, some of them are just sample. Like this one is the image sample. It's a sample. You can click on it. It'll show you how they, you know, it'll talk a little bit about how to use an image. Now, if you want to use an image of your own, obviously you need to bring an SDK guy or if you have SDK experience because you're going to pull in some widget into uh, or an image into the back end and then map it so it makes sense. So you can view the image sample. It has some idea for you what to do. And there's, you know, sparkline on image, simple dashboard. These are just basics. Most people will probably not use most of them. They'll use a custom or they'll use one of these good ones, which are what if control, funnel, gauge, bubble grid, interactive, data cloud. And there's a bunch of them here. Heat maps, waterfall, uh, date selection, if they needed a date selector. And then the table, which is just a, another way to view a grid. And then you have, you can use ISRU maps, etc. if you have a different uh, if you have Ajax other than uh, which is an alternative for flash in this case all right so as you see there's some option here that's hidden some of these might have visualization properties I think there's another demo that we're gonna have where we talk about area ma mashup and image layouts uh, but those are 
basically a little bit different they're not available here and we're also gonna see here the ability to choose different widgets or custom visualizations at the iPhone iPad level and you see here the ability to customize your selection so you can you know say oh I want to show uh, rounded etc so it allows you to make some selections to define the data types look for description for latitude longitude etc select attribute you may want to change an attribute depending on which one you're using for your layout now obviously this is a an iPhone or an iPad so uh, you know just want to make sure that you're you know what you're doing and then you get you know some more options depending on which uh, again which uh, visualization you use you'll have different options okay and again these like might not be all available here so one thing that I don't like about my strategy is that they're not consistent so you might see something in flash you might see something else in iPhone you might see the same label but they look different they feel a little bit different and this keeps going on this trend you'll see in documents and dashboards again you have another set of widgets to select from that might be the same or might be a little bit different so just keep that in mind it's not consistent all over the map they're trying to get there but it's not there yet okay so let's select one uh, I'm not sure which one will work let's do let's see the gauge that's a that might be a safe bet okay so it's probably not a good one but you see what happened here now you're running in flash mode and it's showing a different widget okay uh, if you want to change it just go back to your custom visualization and you can choose something else let's just choose let's just choose the waterfall see how that looks like okay so now you got another an interactive one some of them are interactive like this one lets you do some what if analysis and you can right click and the properties you can change colors you can manipulate some of the properties and you can change the what if property so you can disable it enable it sometimes you can inherit graph properties depending on the graph so if you were using a line graph here you might be able to inherit some properties this will let you will allow you control a little bit more control but it will require a lot more customization so you what what you need to do in this case is go back to your design and or your graph and you might have to change this to a line and then you could change colors etc then when you go run it bring back your graph here so you can format I don't know what you want to do so you could uh, just go to just choose a color for the let's change the marker and do a plus for instance etc and so you can make some changes here but not all the changes that you make here will go into the flash there's some limitation color will go in so any changes that you make here you could customize this and then hopefully some of them will go through so when we go here to flash this is the default obviously but now that you know we did change it to a line we could inherit some of the properties all of a sudden and similar, the same thing goes for um, for uh, gauges. Gauges, if you want to use inherited properties, you have to go back into the graph mode and change it to a gauge widget first before you can use the inherited properties. So there's a little bit of dependency about which uh, what inherited values or properties you can inherit as far as color, text, etc they will always be linked to your graph and the graph has to be in a format that is allows the inheritance for example a line and a waterfall makes sense a gauge 
in the graph will inherit will allow you to inherit uh, properties into the gauge of the uh, the flash component. So now what we talked about is adding custom visualizations to a grid or a graph. Okay, so this is very simple. You can save it and you're done. Okay, it couldn't have been easier with using these out of the box. And it, like you said, you can have your developer uh, or your SDK developer add some custom ones and uh, then you can take advantage of them. So what you can do here is save them and reuse them or save them and embed them later in a dashboard. So you have those options. Now let's go to the dashboard and take a look quickly at the widgets and dashboards. So let's go subject area. So which one would have see what the inventory has okay let's just run this one see how it looks like okay so that's uh, probably not the one we want let's go and choose something more diverse let me go back shared subject area and let's see what what do we have here Let's look at this one. Okay, so we have a dashboard here. Notice this dashboard doesn't have flash, so if we edit it and add a flash component here, it won't work automatically. So let, let me show you what I mean. This has different properties, but if we go to the design mode, we can right click and go to the property and go to the widget. This is just like the custom visualization that I showed you outside the dashboard. Here you go, you have the flash, which are the ones that we were looking at outside the dashboard. It looks a little bit fancier here. But you also have DHTML, which are the non-flash. Most people are leaning towards using these versus the flash, so it's up to you. And then you have the mobile ones, okay? One of the cool things about in the dashboard, say let's say you selected the, the gauge here. Not only does it say flash, but it says what what else. It gives you automatically says what else this will work in. So I selected the gauge. It said you can. It will work in flash, and it will work in the HTML. Versus in the grid outside, we only had the flash. So this is kind of more advanced. I think they spent more time or effort uh, making this a uh, little bit more dynamic. Okay, so let's just choose this one. Okay, so here I chose it and it's in a flash mode now with a flash option here is selected implying that this graph is flash it's not talking about everything else so if i go and click here the flash icon disappears that means my document doesn't have flash option <coughs> but if i go to tools I'll go to my document properties and i say enable flash under the document flash okay now some new icon will pop up and if i go to flash should hopefully see there's my gauge okay and again it'll it'll inherit or not inherit dependent on the properties that you've selected so here you can show data labels show or hide titles change color default colors you can't inherit unless you change it in the so let's go back here let's change this guy or let's go to design Let's change it to a okay. So here it'll show the default. Which one do you want it to render by default? Great. It'll show still the widget. It'll show the grid properties. Let's unmerge some of these. That could be a problem. Remember, merging here can cause problems for some of your widgets. So be careful about that. And then here's the default. And I didn't do what I intended to do when I came here. But what I wanted to do is change this to a gauge in the graph. Now we're in the graph editor, not in the flash editor, remember? And here's, look here, there's this new icon that pops in here that is telling you that this is utilizing a gauge widget so while you're in the editor you know how it's going to render in flash but now because I chose this graph as a gauge type when I go back to flash 
I have the extra luxury now to modify the properties and let it inherit. So if I went here, what does that do? See, change the colors, change a bunch of things because what it's saying is whatever I see in the design mode is going to be rendered here. If I don't have the properties enabled uh, to inherit, then it's going to take the MicroStrategy default coloration and formation. Uh, again, if you're going to use the inheritance, you might want to go here. And I'm not going to get into this, but you might want to start playing with the properties and the graph options effects you might want to even format some things you might have you know different options here and you also will have more options if you go back to desktop so that's a good point to make here you will see here a limited number of options but if you go back to desktop meaning you save this guy go to desktop open it and try to edit this graph you'll see the ability to change you know colors dots ranges etc at text remove text there's a lot you can do actually we have another video uh, specialized in gauge and gauge widgets so you might want to look at that to see the gauge uh, modifications that you can do in the desktop there's a lot more that you can do in the desktop than you can do in the on the web so this, this demo, again, is just to uh, get your feet wet with custom visualizations, whether in the grids and graph or inside the dashboards. And there's a lot you can do with this, but this will get you started. Okay, and look out for more videos where we're going to start talking about specific widgets or specific uh, custom visualizations. Thank you.